Erie has a lot of historical data on the movements and I've seen the movements from the guys I know and it's pretty cool where they seasonal how they do this and of course we want to know that on kings i know exactly what are they doing right now pete right we (laughs) want to know we think they're out (laughs) well you know right we don't know know. we want to see those seasonal habits nice to know what triggers that right if there's a year after year there's something that triggers that inward migration or is it just timing yeah timing right water temperature what is that right it'd be cool to know see they go to the North Shore and they go to Tom Allen's world and do they come back? Right. Some of them. Right? Yep. We just really right. to, throughout the season. Because obviously we all there's more we'll say love for King Salmon. There is. And that would be great. We pay the bills here. Be great. Right. That's what the attention is. To get before I wrap it up in my career. Where it's useful. Huh? Yeah. I don't know. I think the the cool thing about Lake Trout is they live longer. So you you can put that in them and and you right, get more data, data you right. know. You might get 10 years out of right. out of versus King where maybe you got two years of data because obviously you want them big enough. So yeah. you're going to get a one-year-old fish. You're going to tag them. You might get two more years out of them, right. maybe. Yeah. So, but. He needs that data. Right. Nice to have. <laughs> I'd love to see it. So they did some stuff, um, and I believe it was done on Michigan um, where they tracked them. And it really showed some daily movements of how far, I mean, uh, 5 a.m., they're in 60 foot of water. We assume that they're feeding on bait. Mm -hmm. And then three hours later, they're 300 foot down, you know, eight miles offshore and obviously cold water. And that's in just one day, you know. So there, there was a lot of that cool data, like. Interesting. It's nothing to them to move, you know, right. where you don't see that with lake trout, you know, that, that daily movement or hourly movement as much. So very cool to see. Yeah. Well, this is it, man. This show is going to be over. Our show is going to be over in about 15 minutes, but the greater Niagara fishing expo is going to be over in about an hour. Uh, what's the show been like for you, Ralph? It's been fun. It seems like it's a, been a blur. We've had a lot going on. Um, Pete and I have been spending a lot of time together lately. Right. Um, but yeah, it's been been very busy. Very I'm busy tired. weekend. Mentally, yeah. mentally tired, you know, after this week. Yeah. Weekends. Tired. It'll be nice to uh, sleep in my own bed. Right. So tell me about the school. Um, what was the school? What was it like for you going through the experience? But I think more importantly for our audience is what, what was it like for someone who came to the school? What kind of experience did they get this year? Um, I think that obviously when you put three guys in a room, spend a, a lot of time on that lake, um, we experienced it in our planning sessions, how different that we might do things. At the end of the day, the success might be the same. Three different ways of doing things. They're similar. Um, we're, we're using the same tools, but getting there might be a little different. And then uh, we start picking at each other and wondering why what you know really trying to get to the root of you know we've uh i mean we we spent all this time creating a a powerpoint presentation and many times we had to stop and just kind of you know sit back and ask casey you know tell us a little bit more about that you know what i mean like pick his stuff up same thing with pete they did it to me you know and the amount of time that we it was like chucking a grenade in a room and you know what i mean everybody kind of sits back and we probably spent Double the time. If if we just sat down and just did a PowerPoint presentation and got our work done and got out of there, it probably would have taken us half the amount of time. But the time that we took to stop and go, wait a minute, what do you do? Why do you do it that way? And then we would say, let's not talk about this. <laughs> we will not finish our right. presentation. So let's just get this over right. out of our system and then right. move on. Yeah. But it happens and many times that we go like a beer break, right? Yeah. We literally, and then another 20 minutes, and then we'd run in another one of these. Odd. <laughs> 25 minutes of discussion how what what and then like okay we can't do this again this right is, no 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 we have our system yeah and there was there was one slide that we absolutely were like we cannot do this <laughs> we cannot do this at the no we're just going to go fast you say your thing you say your piece and you say your piece and we're going to move on so what did you learn from the experience what is that you're going to take back to your boat this year hmm that's a good question um Maybe I might try. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about hooks. We, so we did a, a Q&A this morning mm-hmm. and uh, we had a, 
pretty in-depth conversation about um, hooks. Um, Casey and I are on one side. Pete has his way of doing things. Maybe he uh, gets Casey and I to try his w method of doing things. So it's always worth looking at. I mean, I think as fishermen, we're always, I don't know, experimenting. We see new things. We got to try them. There's, there's a lot of things that pass and fail our systems. But when we see those things, we got to try it. If it's going to up our game, we got to at least see what it's about. You know, uh, what, what, do you do, what do you do there? Tell us about the, the hook thing that you do different. Um, so one of the questions or a, a big topic is just uh, meat rigs, treble hooks versus double singles. Yeah. So Pete is a, he has a double single system that he likes to use. Uh, personally, I've, I've just always done a, a single treble and it's worked for me. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Scientist over here is throwing a bunch of stuff at us and. So Just it might be worth looking at food for thought. Yeah. And you heard a little bit independent thought process. We had a, so yeah. outside of me and yeah. um, yep. guys do stuff different, right? Just trying to help you out. Okay. Help out I like it. I, you know, or at least, at least uh, and it, keep, keep an open mind. Let's just say that way. Right. Yep. That's right. It may not be for everybody, but it's helping. Yeah. Do you learn anything? I did. I already knew he had a super clean boat, very well organized, nice, which indicated he was OCD, but mm -hmm. now I know he's very OCD. Yeah. Uh, he can handle a PowerPoint, which I didn't know. So I, I probably should have just gave him the whole project, <laughs> you know, and said, I'm not volunteering. You can, you can dump 40 hours on that. You're good. I'm good. But I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So I learned that, uh, if it happens, it's good under pressure when things are probably going to happen again in a month. Yeah. So we, I said, Hey, next march is yours so yeah. so, so the next gonna, one we're just going to take the bull by the horn and prepare that powerpoint which took a couple of good things i learned yeah. he's intense he's competitive mm -hmm. so i kind of knew that but now i definitely know that there were little power sessions yeah okay. and uh respect him was a fisherman really in his mind he's yeah, it was good i don't know a lot of time with these guys put the homework in they think about processes mm -hmm. they don't just do it right and then oh gets fresh but there's a process involved, so I got to saw, see his thought process. And very prepared guy. Mm -hmm. So I, like I, it. I appreciate it. Good. Compliments, silly. Do you think? Do you think being OCD is a helpful trait to yeah. be a charter captain? He's OCD, so I am OCD as much as my time will allow me. Yeah, I agree. But like when Trevor did the camera shoot on my boat, you know, we, we talked about being able to go in your cabin and find that spoon that is good instantly because you know where you put it or you break the hook off you know right where the hook container is right where the bead container is without right sure like a lot time. of guys i, I tell I, everybody I, my books organized so i could send you to go get it you know what i mean so that, their left second row yeah exactly so, so that's how i can find it i can send you to find it so we had that similarly similarly it helps i, I it helped me be a better fisherman mentally yeah. right and prepared yeah the other thing I learned about you in the last month or two, you know, just talking behind the scenes, is this West guy got any good? Um, is that you're a big box slayer? You're a big whitetail guy. We had a hell of a year. Yeah. So. Tell me. I, uh, my, I mean, I guess the highlight for me with that would be my uh, my kid really wanted to stop it off this year. He kind of took a little hiatus. You know, he just graduated high school a couple of years ago, and uh, he kind of wanted back in the game. Loves fishing. First mates all summer long or all season long. Um, he's got the hunting bug. Kind of back, put, put that on the back seat this year. He wanted in. Um, so we really put him back in the game. Um, fortunately, I shot, a, I shot a good buck early in bow season here in New York. Um, after not having success early in Ohio, um, he kind of let me concentrate on him a little bit. He scored. You know, so I was thinking, well, hey, great, you know, two for the team, you know, we're up and uh, it, we just kept rolling. So um, and I'm going to interject. I, I know why he's successful in hunting. Also, he's prepared. So like planning, prepared mentally, the whole thing. So like the whole process is, uh, hey, make sure we got extra click advances. I, I got two. Oh, he whipped out the I got spare batteries. You know what I mean? Like HGMI cable, Mr. Computer. That is a 
backup computer in case mine dies, like, yeah. prepared. Yeah. 100%. 110%. Yeah, I mean, hunting for me. He's not a wing it guy. I think like fishing. Like, uh, I mean, here we are. Um, we're, we're months away from really our season kicking off. But, you know, there's preparations being done. Um, rods and reels are getting re-strung. You know what I mean? That prep work starts then. Not when, once the boat's in the water. You're not putting new line on reels while the boat's floating there. Um, same thing with hunting. You know, uh, hunting usually starts, I would say, right now. So I do a lot of prep work right now. Um, it's kind of the off season, obviously, but there's a lot of telltale signs of the deer woods now that goes away in the summertime. Obviously my attention goes elsewhere, but I don't need to be in the woods in July. And then I know that I'm ready, uh, late August cameras go back out. We start, you know, knowing what's there. And so, so yeah, if he kills a monster buck or 10, it's, it's not, it's more skill or preparation. I mean, he's one of those guys. Mm-hmm. So you can comfortably say that. I could comfortably say that. It's a compliment. Love hunting. So it's yeah. definitely, definitely a different pursuit. But we got uh, some questions coming in here. This one's from Jim Lemon, and uh, Jim wants to know uh, how has fishing changed, uh, salmon fishing changed on Lake Ontario over the past twenty years. I'll start. Ooh. I think the big thing is uh, we're, we're really seeing a, a big difference in spring king catches. Um, so spring king fishery has just been amazing. And it doesn't have to be in the west, the far west end of the lake. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're seeing a little less of the transition. So we're seeing some fish, a lot of fish being caught in April and June, which used to be a head scratcher at times. Like month. Yeah, we used to have all these kings in May, and then June would show up, and we kind of went, wait a minute, what's going on? Thermal Klein would set up, thank God, all right, we're back in king fishing. It seems like once we start rolling, it continues. Um, the opposite of that is that that's late season. Um, the staging fishery seems to lag a little bit for us, um, where we used to really push it well into even October, mid-October of fishing. Um Personally, I'm more of that early September. I'm done for the season. So I might make it a couple of weeks into September. Um, but that's a lot different from 20 years ago where I'd push it well into October. And, you know, we're still catching fish and fishing's good. But I don't know. Maybe some of that's interest, too. But I think that that tougher staging fishery on the west end, um, I don't know. It, it's definitely different than it was 20 years ago. And I'm sure you've seen a big change in things too. Yeah, we've seen, uh, you know, tactics, some little tactics have changed, which is uh, bad for the fish, good for the angler. Mm-hmm. Pan optics, thing, the electronics have advanced. You guys are at Fishhawk are advancing and moving the needle. So those are some physical equipment change type things. And then, like last year was kind of a weird year with some uh, mature kings inshore late for mid-september and then a bunch of mature kings out in the gonzo land and I'm way out in the middle of the lake and us going like why i'm not sure what yeah. so that was kind of a new curveball in the past year interesting to have inshore and offshore when i say offshore way offshore yeah, mature, mature king mature, right. dark nasty you know fanged adults occurring way out there and then in 60 to 80. So that was a little bit of a curveball last week. Yeah, Pete's specifically talking about the big boys tournament out of the Oak where we saw that very yeah, that was exactly. a that was a highlight of that week. That and then week we saw we it got, a little bit um so. when we got back on the to Wilson area that still like what are you guys doing out here still, right? So mm-hmm. you just never know. Lake keeps you on your toes. I think, I think fishing's great. I mean I would certainly take the fishery now as opposed to twenty years ago. Um got anglers are smarter. Te- uh, technology has grown, um, but guys are smarter out there, you know. And like, um, like you said, that typically June to mid June was grindy, little risky booking trips because uh, right. you might be fishing for some straggler kings, some steelhead, some cohos, you know, scratch box fishing, right? Yeah. To where pretty doggone good. Yeah, uh, several. So uh, yeah, like June. So I don't. Consistent. I got no problem with June. Right. No, so that was a change. We don't. We don't see the offshore breaks like we used to yeah hard heavy hard heavy offshore visible uh, slip yeah. that 
I remember when I came up here in the night, early, early 90, 1990, actually, we had right. bonsai breaks, go chase, top water, steelhead action. Yeah. Yeah. Breaks and not, yeah. That's, and dissipated the way you just don't see yeah. that and it might be just the lake warming up a little bit differently um those shorter winters like this year minus the fact that there's eight inches, eight inches of snow out there right now but it's been a pretty mild winter so yeah all right here's one from scott scott wants to know uh, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier uh using those treble hooks and meat rigs do you see the fish escaping and the retrieve more than with single hooks <laughs> I knew this would be fun. So no, we we as far as single hooks, we'll, once that fish gets by that initial, uh, 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 and you get to that rod, you're you're probably ninety percent that fish is coming in that. It's it's that green. It's just that initial. What you see, trouble yeah. hook fishing, spoon fishing, yeah, copper fishing. Once you get past that, and that fish is hooked up, and that that fish is taking line, my call, I I'll go up to the dash and say. I'm confident, even with customers on the box. That's how confident I am. Once they get yes. that initial, it's I have a way higher confidence level thing. Yeah, and it's really just that initial thing. So trebles versus singles, it's always been a debate. Um, you know, you go through some old timers boxes and you'll see a lot of single hooks. Um, once they're hooked with a single hook, they're they're not coming up. That's, that's whether you're, so. you're still hit on a spoon or yeah, a lake. Yeah, it doesn't matter what ball. rig it is, what you're fishing it's with. Yeah, one, yeah, 100%. But um, the the other side of that, I think you put more hooks in fish, certainly with a treble hook. But once they're hooked and you're actually fighting them, so we get past that maybe 10 seconds, that first initial reaction, yeah, I would say your landing ratio is certainly better. So at the end of the day, it's what makes it to the box in my book. Did it take 15 shots or 12 shots or 12 shots and 15 shots? But if I can land 12 and you can land nine with yours, I, I win. Right, you know, right, right. It, not win-win, but that's my goal is to improve my landing percentage regardless of how many shots it takes or vice versa. I want to end up with more fish on my boat. So I just I feel a comfort level now that I've gone through testing several types of hooks, knowing what I like on that hook versus the ones i don't like anymore i saw the differences and the reasons why they let me down a little bit more than i thought and then talking to guys asking them like we did this morning right. what's your percentage for meat fishing would you feel when you start hearing 40 to 60 percent yeah we did, we did some polling this morning in the so, room so but yeah you know, i talked to other guys and it was kind of a, i was a spur of the moment polling yeah. decision today yeah. and i was like we had so many Makes meat, you think. meat guys in there I'm yeah. like, let's just ask them yeah. you know maybe maybe i would have heard the opposite like we're like 80, right. you know, the, the st I would say stick with it. So. I had to think about it. But but when I saw how many guys put their hand up and that were probably under 50% or under definitely under 60 and under, and a lot of 40% of guys, it was like, it's going to hurt you to try, try it. Right. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's all. I'm not going to coach you. I'm not going to force you. It's just right. opening the door. Open the door, and it. it if you try and don't like it, okay. And if it works great for you, hopefully, I hope to. You know, all right. That's all good. All. Last question. We're, we're hitting. Uh, this is it. Yeah. This is it. All right. Well, you said something earlier that I thought was a little interesting, which was uh, your son's your first mate. Yeah. So tell me what that's like and, and how that uh, how that affects your relationship <laughs> outside of off the boat. So, uh so I have a few first mates, my son being one of them. Um, it's got, it's kind of grown into it a little bit. Um, I, I would say when, once he had about nine years old, that was about the time period where he could really stand being on the boat from the cold day. Um, so we back it up and we, we, you know, we do some fun fishing, derby fishing, the same thing. I'm sure Pete's gone through the same thing where you get some time on the boat, you know, he'd jump to the boat nice and early probably take a little nap, wake up, we'd feed him some Doritos and, you know, some Mountain Dews and he'd hang. But um, once he got to about 16, 15, somewhere in there, um, uh, my doc mate started grabbing him a few times to, hey, I need a first mate, need a first mate. And he started making a little bit of money at it now. Now he's getting paid to do something that he absolutely loves. Mm -hmm. That's the greatest feeling in the world, right? right? So, and he really latched onto that. He's learning a lot. Um, and it's getting to the point where I'm starting to pick up some stuff from him 
because I, I feel that sometimes we might know too much or we think we know too much. So we wouldn't do things a certain way. No, we won't run that because the sun is doing this and it's cloudy or whatever the case is where he doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. So he's like, no, I'm going to run this. And then that's dynamite for the day. Mm -hmm. So um, or something. yeah. And you're like, oh, okay, Hey, you get me out of my element and challenge me a little bit. And I think that that's important. So sometimes being the boss on the boat, isn't all that it's cracked up to be and having somebody that challenges that, which is certainly your bloodline. You know what I mean? He's going to challenge me at every step of the way. It's a, it's a good feeling. So he loves the tournament fishing aspect of things. Uh, loves being outdoors. Um, at, he, he started working for my other business. So he's taking his enjoyment to that too. Um, so it's a good feeling. So yeah, I, I like sharing time with him. Will he be a captain? Too? It's a discussion. So it, it looks that way. So I, he's got the bug. I, I, God bless him. He's got the bug. So right, it's pretty awesome that he enjoys his time out there. Like I said, he, the kid loves fishing. So he loves being out there. Um, lo loves every aspect of it. The, the competitive aspect of things. Um, he's really gotten a, a taste of that fishing with me. Loves that, the tournament scene and doing all of that stuff. Um, he's got it. So I like to see it. So he's way beyond where I was at his age. So I'll give him that too. So Keith, what's been your experience with that? With the uh, kid? With your son, yeah. So, yeah, it's probably similar, except uh, I got to get him out of bed in the morning because he's not very excited to go. So yeah. it's, it's just, let's go. We got to get going. And then, uh, yeah, a little doze off here and there. But once he's once he's There's awake. There's similar age. What, how old is he? He's eight. Okay. So once, I'm 21. So he's awake. Once he's awake and alive, he's he's good. <laughs> keep him moving. And uh, I like he, he takes, he wants to. Uh, he wants to take the bull by the horn someday. He's like, hey, can I can I pick out the diver page, right? And uh, first, the end, obviously, you want to say no initially, but then you think, like, no, go, like, for that reason, go ahead. And he's, he's picked out a couple of lures over the years that I would not have picked, and it worked. And then you get the, you see, I told you, or, and it's good. And, but, but you learn, like, now I feel confident in that lure because I would never put it, but you did. And I, you made that lure a player in my arsenal. And I probably would never pick the lure, but so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta give them a little rope. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, yeah, yeah right. you gotta let them have a little response. I get, I get stubborn on that stuff. Like, no, nah, you gotta tell me why you want to run that. He actually, my son this year, um, my number one spoon for the year came because of his introduction of that specific spoon to me. So, and we wrote it out for the year. So I think that says a lot, you know. But yeah, he likes to test things out I'll, I'll be honest with you he might have had more hours on the water this past year than i did wow. so because of working he, he works for my doc mate also so mm -hmm. you know sharing that water time and basically doubling his time on the water he might have had more Before time on the water Before he helps so your boat experience with him yep. and bringing some of that to you like yep. Said, right? yep. Yep. so my kid uh, yeah i'm not sure where i was going with it but Similar similar situation with him, the whole process of uh, you feeling like your kid was way ahead of where I was at right. his age. Yeah. Same way, like when 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 I first started salmon fishing in Lake Erie, cohos were just introduced, like in seventy eight, seventy nine, eighty. It was all brand new. So my dad and I started ground zero together. We we're every, it was all oh, you know, learned everything together, so, right? And so he kind of faded out lost interest in it and I, I kept it going. Whereas my kids got the advantage of, you know, thirty years or whatever it is right. of this is how we do things. I yeah. cut the learning process right. way down for you. Right. And you can you can improve on it and but you're gonna benefit from it. Right. So my kids spoiled. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? They're spoiled. Like if they had to do the same things, like I, I we were doing a brown trout seminar earlier and I was I mentioned the fact of fishing thirteen rods and my buddies family's open bow boat that they uh, water ski from you know when i was like 15 years old you know mm -hmm. um so my kid's spoiled by what he has in front of him and you know what he knows because of that so uh, well, that's awesome we really appreciate you coming on around this is the second time this weekend yeah, and I appreciate all the work you did at the school i think like i said 
I was talking to people today, and everyone had great things to say about what you guys did this weekend. So uh, appreciate we had that. a good positive response. So I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, Pete, thanks for hanging out for a couple hours. With Pete, it's been fun. Been fun. Appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing you. Uh, this yeah, Pete, yeah. 